I'm going to take us Ksenia back to the year 2011 when I was an exchange student living in Mallorca. Mallorca is an island in Spain, in case anyone doesn't know it. It's part of what's called the Balearic Islands. There's at least four of them, four main ones anyway. And I was living with quite the intrepid roommate and he had this idea that we should do a trip around another one of the islands called Formentera. And I was not quite as adventurous as he was, but I wanted to embrace more adventurism. I, mean, I was living abroad, I was 21 years old, so I was at a point in my life where I was wanting to change my identity a bit and become someone who took more risks. I'm sure I'm butchering it. You said, described your roommate as intrepid? Intre intrepid. <laughs> intrepid means that someone is adventurous, they take risks. When I was younger, I was never really much of a risk taker. I like to play it safe, not always necessarily be in my comfort zone, but not do things that felt like they were dangerous or risky. And certainly this trip that I'm going to talk about was full of its, its risks and its uncertainties, its mysteries, its adventure. The place we wanted to go was this island, Formentera, and it's a small island off the coast of Ibiza. And we had this idolized vision of this island because there's a beer company in Spain called Estrella. It's actually based here in Barcelona. And every year they do these commercials that usually they have them in these really fun locations, beach vacations, trying to capture the energy of summer here. And one of the years they did the commercial in Formentera. So we used to watch this and would just be so taken aback by how beautiful this island is, the crystal clear waters, the pristine beaches, just looked like paradise. And he came up with this idea that let's kayak around the island. So the plan was to go to Ibiza, if you're taking a ferry from Mallorca to Ibiza. In Ibiza, picking up the kayaks, crossing to Formentera, so they're close. I looked up before because I did not remember the distances. Did you actually kayak from one island to another? Exactly, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> It says it's 11 to 12 kilometers. I think it was a bit more because that's as the bird flies, which means mm -hmm. that if you went a straight line between the two closest yeah. points, but we had to go from one beach where the kayak renters left us to the point, the nearest beach in Formentera. So it's probably a bit more than 12 kilometers. I believe none of us had any experience really kayaking, sea kayaking. And we started out with 10 of us going on this, this adventurous trip, signing up for this adventure. <laughs> Something tells me we started 10 of us. <laughs> somebody somebody like, didn't reach their destination. <laughs> exactly. It, so, it sounds like the, the beginning of a horror movie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We us. started 10 of us. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. This first crossing is where the ferries also go through. It's like a straight and the ferries go through there to go from one island to the other. So we're dodging big ferries, which you're down low when you're in a kayak in case anyone's never been in a sea kayak. You're really low on the water and everything. It's probably easy for a big boat like that not to see you. That was the first terrifying moment, but we made it across. We had our first experience. We, we warmed up. You could say like we got our sea arms. We say like you get your sea legs is when you're getting used to being on a boat, right? Because there's mm -hmm. the, the movement and so on. Mm -hmm. so we could mm -hmm. say we could adjust that to we got our sea arms. It was good. It was a good first experience. We arrived in Formentera and we're ready to make the crossing. We, we have our first night. Of course, we didn't bring tents. We were going camping, oh. but we didn't bring tent. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hopefully it was warm. <laughs> yeah, it was spring break and the weather can be iffy, which means that it's not so predictable. We were looking for a place to sleep and on the beach we found a beach hut. Here they're called Chiringuitos and that's the closest translation in English. It's a place where normally during the summer we have them here in Barcelona as well. You could go and have a beer or a meal right on the beach. And here they, they put them up and take them down. They put them up in the spring and take them down in the fall. Uh, but there they have some that are permanent. So we found one of these that wasn't open. It's off season, right? Spring break, the tourist season hasn't started yet. We decided to sleep here. We're protected in case it rains. We're protected a little bit from the elements. You know, we're all, we're all good. We went into the nearest town, which was a long walk. Went to the supermarket, picked up things for dinner, brought it back. And then we realized that we forgot to buy water on an island. We just had the water that we brought with us. So we had some to drink, but we had bought pasta to cook, which requires a lot of fresh water. And so we're like, oh, no big deal. We have tons of water. You know, you, when you cook pasta, you put salt in the water anyway. So we'll just grab some seawater. So we did that. We cooked the pasta and sit down to eat. 
We all take our first bites and it's just the look of shock on everyone's face as they take this first bite is the most, the saltiest thing that I have ever eaten in my life oh by my far. God. But you beautifully described the beach there. You said uh, pristine. <laughs> what is pristine? Yeah, we'll use this a lot with beaches, pristine beaches, meaning we might also say virgin beaches. So that means that they're unaffected by human damage. They're, they're in a state that looks very well taken care of, very untouched, and so on. Mm -hmm. The best beach I was taken aback <laughs> by, or I was enchanted by, was in Brazil. Mm. So yeah, it was this exactly like you described, the sand was cr crystal white and crystal clear water. That first night we had a squall blew over, which means a big storm. So what we, we were planning this trip to go around the island kayak and all of a sudden we're stranded. We had to weather the storm. We had to wait until the storm passed so that we could continue our journey. So we found some ways to entertain ourselves on the beach. We were going in and out of the town to pick up supplies, to, to eat and so on. It's kind of the days were passing, the storm wasn't passing and so on. And this is where we started losing people. People start deciding they're gonna take the ferry back to Ibiza and take their, their kayaks and so on. In the end, four of us just remained that we're like, we, we're going to do this. We're going to wait out. We're going to see if we can do it. And sure enough, the storm eventually passed after a few days. It was actually a blessing that we had some of these days because we could kind of stake out the island, find different places where we could camp at our different stops. Yeah, it wasn't as we had originally planned. Things did not go as well. Yeah. Planned. Does stake out mean to explore? means to, to look around, to see the lay of the land, to figure mm -hmm. figure things out in this sort of sense. Police is stake out, for example, a place where they know criminals are, are hiding. Though We've all seen this probably in a show or a movie where mm -hmm. they'll sit in the car and they have their fast food and their drinks and their coffee, and they're just there waiting, trying to see what the criminals are doing. Did you have some pasta left for those pasta. next couple of days? <laughs> so, I don't remember exactly what we eat, but I remember a lot of canned tuna and a lot of hard boiled eggs. <laughs> Lots of Those are the bits. easiest. <laughs> but I easiest. can guarantee we did not forget to buy water again at the supermarket. We loaded it up. Isn't it frustrating when you learn a new word or expression here with us in our videos? But then when it's time for you to actually go out there in the real world and actually use these words and expressions you learned, you completely forget them. I know this can be really frustrating. But here's a solution. You have to be sure to use the words and expressions you are learning as soon as possible in conversation. But then you might be saying right now, but I don't have anybody to practice speaking with. Well, don't worry because that's exactly why we here at Real Life English created the Real Life app. This is not just another English app. This is a solution we here at Real Life developed especially for learners just like you. Solving the most common problems you face in your learning every day to take your English to the next level. And you don't need to take my word for it. The app has a rating of 4.9 stars and tons of happy users. Download the app now so you can improve your listening skills with our popular lessons, which come with interactive transcripts so you can learn how native and native-like speakers actually speak, learn tons of words, phrasal verbs, and idioms with flashcards, because the app uses cutting-edge technology that helps to memorize the words you learn much faster, and finally be able to stop practicing speaking all by yourself. With the app, you can actually connect to other English learners from other parts of the world to have short conversations in real time. So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker, make sure you download and try the Real Life English app right now. You can click up here or down in the description below to download the app. Or if you prefer, you can also go to Google Play Store, Apple App Store, search for Real Life English and download the app from there. It is free to try and here's something really cool. Once you download the app, the first thing you need to do is take the Fluency Challenge. The Fluency Challenge is a series of mini lessons that will introduce you to all these cool features the app has to offer. And if you complete the Fluency Challenge successfully, guess what? We have a special, really special gift for you. So if you are curious to find out what that gift is, download the app right now, take the Fluency Challenge and see it for yourself. I'm sure you will love it. But now, let's get back to the lesson. You brought from this experience, your takeaway was also that no matter how 
good and thoroughly you plan, something may go wrong. So, right, you should always have maybe plan B or be open for these new experiences mm -hmm. and embrace the adventure. We even have an expression that we say, best laid plans. It's like when someone says they had all this these plans and nothing went as expected, it's like best laid plans. Just meaning that you plan for things, but things don't always go as we plan, right? We were able to wait out the storm and we're like, okay, we're gonna, there were four of us left. We're gonna finally do this. It was me and an American friend that were in one kayak. So that, and our friends that were both Spanish and they were more athletic than we were. That's also worth noting in another kayak. So the first day, an important parenthesis here was we were planning to do this in about a week and we had to reduce to three days, meaning that the distances were a lot longer. 69 kilometers around for Montero. That probably originally would have been eight to nine, 10 kilometers per day, which is totally doable for someone even who doesn't have a lot of experience paddling in a kayak. It ended up being that we had to do more like 33 kilometers per day, which is a lot being that <laughs> we just did the crossing, which was 12 kilometers. You had quite a workout. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in better shape now than I was back then, but. <laughs> No, 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 I just wanted to say that you mentioned that you were not so athletic as your friends, but I'm sure after that journey, you were more fit, you know, <laughs> Most more <definitely>. in shape. <laughs> so the first day too was the longest. I don't know if that was the best planning, but it had to be that way because we had to go across one of the main capes of Formentera. And this was also the most tricky or dangerous part of the journey because the weather going around this cape, not the weather, but the waves, the water conditions going around this cape could be quite turbulent, would be the word. We start around the cape, and the first thing that happens is our friends that are in the other kayak, they're maybe 10, 15 meters ahead of us. Right by their kayak, we see a dolphin leap out of the water right next to ah, them. So uh, nice. It's just, it sounds really nice, but it's terrifying because you're, <laughs> you know, you're right on the water. It's this huge sea animal leaping out of the water right by you. Yeah, and you have no power, right, compared to a dolphin in the water. Not that dolphins mm -hmm. attack humans or anything, but they could be curious and maybe they come up and they knock you out of the, the kayak. It's, yeah. What are you yeah. going to do? Too playful dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that was the, the only one. And it, in retrospect, looking back, that was really cool to be there in the mm -hmm. water and to see a dolphin. And I'm sure it just saw, heard these sounds and saw these figures above it and mm -hmm. was curious, mm -hmm. right? Dolphins In playful. wild nature, right? It's mm -hmm. not like you go to that aquarium or terrarium to see them. We made it around. So it was, it was through this crazy water going around the Cape, but we made it around and the, the water calmed down. And then we just had a more peaceful water, but it was a long stretch that we had to cross a bay uh, to the place that we had staked out to, to stay in that night. You repeated several times this word cape. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's easy to explain that word because it's just like a geographical notion, right? But could you try to explain what's the cape and also the bay? You just mentioned the word bay. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to get the definition of what a cape is exactly yeah, right, because difficult. I can imagine in my head what a cape was there. And I can think of Cape Town, for example. I believe it's a piece of land that's jutting out into the water, which means yeah, it's yeah. sticking out exactly. into the water. It's like a bump in the land. Exactly. And a bay, like a, where the land curves and there's water that sort of enters in from the sea or the ocean. And it, bay tends to be more tranquil than yeah. the open water. We would call the, the open water is when you're out on the sea and the water's more crazy, it's more wild. Then we keep going. And at this point, my arms are dead. I'm just paddling out I can of pure imagine. momentum. Yeah. Yeah. It's it just becomes this thing of perseverance of if I stop, I'm not gonna be able to continue again. So I can't I can't stop. We get to the beach, I can barely lift my bag, but like, okay, we made it. First day is is done. I'm already thinking like, how am I going to continue going tomorrow? But I was trying not to not to think about it and just one thing at a time, one foot in front of the other, right? So the place we stayed, this is the other fun part of the story. We had, as I mentioned, staked out before when we had the car, we went to this beautiful beach and there was a hotel there and the hotel was closed for the season as well. And we're wandering around the premises of the hotel. I was just being curious and I saw that behind the bar, there was a sliding window of sorts. It's like one of those bar windows where maybe they would pass bottles or something from another room. Was, I, I slid it and I saw that it was open and I decided to crawl through and could like open a door so my friends could come in. We're like, oh, oh there's, there's no one here. It seems like a, it's a nice place. 
to stay and stay away from the elements and the rain and everything. And so that's where we decided to stay the first night. We left the door open so we could get in and the door opened to a lobby and there was a second floor of the lobby. So that's where we set up all of our things. So you illegally penetrated into a hotel. Yeah, it's small, <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> a small, small breaking of the law. <laughs> And we, we slept there. The next morning I'm woken up to hearing keys in the door downstairs and hearing footsteps coming up the stairs. <laughs> now the horror movie begins. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, there's a guy that comes through, he sees us, he, he looks at us and he keeps walking into the next room. And then he comes back and he's like, what are you guys doing here? And we explain to him that, you know, we're doing this trip. We don't have anywhere to stay and everything. We saw that it was open. We're so sorry and everything. And he's like, oh. And he went back downstairs and then he comes back upstairs and he's like, you know, you're not supposed to be here. It's okay. The place is being remodeled. So just don't let anyone else see you. Do you need anything? Do you need me to bring you more blankets? And oh. we're just like all shocked. Like, so no, kind. We're, we're you know? like, like, yeah, it's <laughs> super kind. We were, we were just like panicked that he's going to call the police or something. We're going to end up yeah, in jail yeah. on this island. But luckily everything ended up well. You have to believe in this the would be another story. generosity of humanity. <laughs> Yeah, that was so kind of him, right? Do you know what a squatter is? Have you heard that squatter. term? Squatter. Like a squat, like you do an exercise, you know, you do squats. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. But this is a squatter, is a person who lives illegally in an uninhabited building. So I brought that word up because we were kind of squatting in this, this hotel. Yeah, nice word. So the rest of the story is pretty, pretty smooth sailing as far as things go. No other big events like that. No other crazy water, no other large sea mammals. The next day, I remember we found like a lovely cave and it was much more tranquil to our rhythm because we were sore, but it was it was also that thing that we'd kind of been warmed up from the first really difficult day. We camped again. I just remember a lot of mosquitoes that last night, but then we made the final crossing, managed not to get hit by any ferries. And then, you know, we arrived back in Ibiza. It's this huge sense of accomplishment, elation. And it's like, you know, we did it. We survived all of the salty meals of tuna and hard boiled eggs. <laughs> we, we managed yeah. not to get killed by, by anything. What a story. Yeah. I, now when I think back on any of those things, I laugh about it because it was all not very well planned the way that we did it. None of us had real experience. Of course, it was a bit crazy, but it was also just this amazing adventure. A lot of good times, a lot of the four of us laughing together in these different situations. And when you're in those things, you always just have to embrace it. You have to embrace the unexpected because ultimately it's going to be some of the best memories of your life come out of those experiences where things don't go as planned, but you learn to make the best of it anyway. We have a short clip actually from a documentary that talks about Machu Picchu, talks a little bit about the discovery, the history that we thought it would be fun to share with you because we got to learn all of this with the tour guide, and it's super interesting how the Incans did this. Pablo Neruda, the South American poet, called it tall stepped city of stone. 